What's going on everybody and welcome to another video. So today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I know in the past I've done a lot of uh, formulation videos and uh, trial blend videos and things like that. But this time I actually, it was a subscriber had a really good idea and he was, I think it was a he or she, I'm, I don't remember their name. I'm sorry for not remembering, but they suggested for an upcoming video go through some of your favorite materials. And I was like, that's a really, really good idea actually. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through all my materials. I've got a rack over here, I've got a rack of materials over there. And I'm gonna pull out each bin. And, cause each bin is uh, categorized by type. Like here's my woody bin, I've got a floral bin, I've got a fruity bin, a smoky bin. And I'm just gonna pull out a bin. I'm just gonna, you know, kind of rummage through it and spot some of my really favorite materials that I love using. And then me, you know, talk about a few materials that I think are worth picking up and some that are just kind of like, eh, it's a sleeper, you can probably pass on it. So without further ado, let's go through some of my favorite materials. And uh, let's start with the woody category. Okay, so I pulled out my wood bin a small bin um, but each one of these bottles is a different material um, so this is gonna be a tough decision because there's so many different kinds of woods uh, but I can tell you what my uh, some of my favorites are at the moment um, let's start with some of the the sandalwood materials now with sandalwood I do have real uh, Mysore Indian sandalwood it's great but I don't want to talk about it because it's so expensive uh, to use in a blend. Um, so I want to talk about some of my materials that I reach for that I think are good replacements for, or at least mimic sandalwood very well. Uh, one of them is Dreamwood by Ferminich. Lovely, lovely material. And to me, it's the most recent... Oh yeah, I love it. It's the most recent of all the sandalwood materials out there in the past maybe one or two years that was released. And I think it captures that nice toned down subtle creaminess but it still has this delicate sandalwood because if you smell real actually here we go i've got sandalwood mysore right here to me real sandalwood from india is so subtle it's so delicate and when you're smelling it you're like i i can barely pick up any kind of wood at all it's just there it's soft and it's subtle and that's the way real sandalwood should be uh, Dreamwood mimics that pretty well, in my opinion. So I like Dreamwood from Ferminich very, very much. Um, if you can't find that, the next best thing that I'm constantly reaching for is probably Bactanol. It's just, it doesn't smell as nice, but it works really well in a blend. I mean, it's just an easy, dumb reach that you can go to and it just works for a sandalwood type note. Um, but yeah, Dreamwood from Ferminich. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, let's see. What is another one that I like? Uh, something of a recent um, acquire was I've been doing a lot of uh, getting a lot of naturals in what's called SFE or CO2 extracts and comparing them. So I've got different vetivers, you know, one from Haiti. Um, Where's the other one? Yeah, I don't even have these categorized. I have two different real natural vetivers, of course, vetiver acetate. But then I went and got uh, Ferminich has their vetiver SFE, which is just a, you know, CO2 extract. And you know what? I'm really liking it because it's different from your typical vetiver Haiti in a sense where if you smell just regular vetiver essential oil from Haiti, it's a darker side of vetiver while it's still you know fresh grassy rooty and you know all those things that vetiver should be the real one uh the real essential oil from haiti is a little bit on the darker side in my opinion but the vetiver sfe from Ferminich, while it's still sourced from haiti the co2 extract version is a little bit more cleaned up and refined it's not as dark and it's not as rooty but it is certainly just as fresh if not a little bit more fresher it's like a fresher take on vetiver so vetiver sfe from Ferminich has been one of my recent uh go-to for all my vetiver needs uh but sometimes i do like to mix a little bit vetiver haiti the real essential oil with the sfe just 
sometimes if it's a little too fresh and I'm like, I need a little bit more darkness coming from that vetiver, I'll mix in just a touch of the, you know, real essential oil, not the CO2. And that's perfect. Uh, let's see. What is another one that I should talk about here? There's just, there's too many. <laughs> there's, too, there's too many. Um, oh, okay. So let's talk about cedar wood essential oils. Now I've got here some cedar wood from Texas, cedar wood Atlas, cedar wood uh, rectified from Furminich, cedar wood Virginia. Uh, I think I have one more cedar wood somewhere in here. Maybe, maybe not. So of all the cedar woods that I have, the cedar wood essential oils, to me, the Atlas is a little bit more balsamic and dense. Because when I think of cedar wood, I think of clean, snappy, like almost reminiscent of childhood pencil shavings is the classic cedar wood note. And the only one that really gives me that uh, is cedar wood Virginia. But Cedarwood, Texas, for some reason, gives me even more of the pencil shaving vibe. And that's my go-to if I want a classic, you know, Cedarwood scent. However, the thing with Cedarwood, Texas, at least from the, the factory that I'm getting it from, there is a little bit of smokiness underneath. So it's not as clean. So what I've been really digging lately Again, Furminich. I've been on a Furminich kick lately for some reason. Furminich makes a cedar wood rectified um, version. And it's basically just, again, it's another, it's not a CO2 extract, but it is a cleaned up, I think it's redistilled multiple times, pulling out all the impurities and things like that. So it is a cleaned up version. It is a cedar wood from Virginia. So it does have the pencil wood shaving vibe but it's so clean. Like this is the cleanest cedar wood that I've ever came across in my life. And it works magical because typically in cedar woods with some of the blends, I'm a little hesitant to go overboard with it, especially with Texas because of the smokiness. I don't want to impart too much smokiness if I want a clean cedar wood note. But this one, I can go heavy handed and go like, three, four, five, six, even like 8% of the perfume concentrate with this alone. And it's just so clean. It never overpowers anything. It never imparts any off notes. It's just clean pencil shavings and it's awesome. So Cedarwood Rectified from Furminich is another favorite of mine. Um, Let's see, I think that should be enough for, for my three favorite woods, or a couple favorite woods. I mean, there's so many other things to talk about. There's like Verdofix, uh, Verdo, Izoe Super, Cedramber, you know, Teak, Blackwood Base. There's just too many to talk about, but these are the three that I reach for the most. Um, oh, I'll talk about one more since uh, we're talking about that. And that is gonna be Patchouli. So patchouli, let me pull out, I got different ones here. I think that should be it. Okay, so different kinds, oh, there it is. So there's different kinds of patchouli, obviously, and I'm not a fan of patchouli at all. Um, actually, I'm missing one more, where is, there it is. So I'm not a fan of patchouli because to me, it just, the minute I smell it, it just brings me back to the, you know, in my younger days when, you know, peace, love and hippies and, and things like that. And it's just, it's very, I don't know. It's just, it reminds me of a, like a dirty hippie from Venice beach trying to sell seashells on the Venice beach boardwalk. They just, it's just, it has this, this smell that takes me back to a place that I don't enjoy. So I'm not a fan of patchouli, but, I do have many different patchoulis because they do serve a purpose in perfumery and of the ones that I have, I do have favorites. So first I'm going to talk about standard, you know, patchouli oil that you can get from anywhere, any retailer. It's, it's garbage in my opinion. It's usually it's the most off-putting notes. It's the dirtiest, the funkiest smelling, and that's not what I'm all about. Um, so I do have, da, 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 
Some different other patchoulis. I think there's a patchouli cure, which is from Albert uh, Ville, and it is a little bit more cleaner and refined. So it's not as dirty, it's not as funky, so that's a nice step above. You could always go with uh, patchouli select the CO2 or the SFE version. That is really nice because now it is, it's, super, it's super cleaned up, no off notes, none of that. However, if you want the cleanest patchouli note possible, the only two that I reach for is either patchouli crystals which is, you know, the patchouli molecule that makes up of the patchouli smell minus all the off notes because it's just a single molecule, the patchouli. And you don't get any cleaner than that. That's just patchouli smelling without no funk, no dirt, no off notes, nothing, just patchouli. That's usually my first go-to. Um, it can be a little bit more on the expensive side if you're because it's a, it comes in a white powder and you're buying it by the grams. If you can't afford patchoulal crystals, uh, the next best thing I found was clear wood, uh, which I think is from Furminich. Ironically, we're on a Furminich kick today, or maybe it's IFF, I don't recall, but it's called clear wood. It's a synthetic molecule, or maybe it's a synthetic base, but it's meant to mimic clean patchouli. And when I smell patchoulal crystals and clear wood side by side, they're pretty much almost one in the same to me. So if you can't afford patchouli crystals, grab clear wood uh, from Furminich, or maybe it's IFF, I don't recall. But if you do want a natural oil of patchouli, the, the best, the cleanest that I've ever came across was just any sort of patchouli select in the SFE CO2 uh, extract. And that's usually the, the next best thing. Okay, so let me pull out another bin. Let's move on to a different category. Okay, so this next category is gonna be the florals. Uh, as you can see, I now brought out three bins. I have a ton of florals. This isn't even all of them. I have another bin over there that's dedicated to just rose and geranium. Uh, so right here is my kind of hodgepodge of just random florals, mostly, you know, your white flowers, your jasmine, your orange blossoms. I have a smaller bin here dedicated to just uh, lily of the valley, you know, mugwe type of material. So let's tackle these and see where we go from there. So for florals, I would say, what are some of my favorites? It's so hard to, to decide because I have so many different ones and so many different florals here. Ooh, this is a tough one. I would say, if you're looking for the cheapest and most cost-effective uh, jasmine notes, and I'm talking about jasmine notes, uh, not something like Hedion or something light, wafty, and like airy. I mean, if you want an actual jasmine type note, you cannot go wrong with jasmine specialty base, which I believe could be Furminich again, or maybe it's Givaudan. I don't, I don't recall, but it's just called jasmine specialty, which is a base. And to me, it's probably the, the easiest cost-effective solution for a jasmine note. Um, if you want something just slightly a little bit different, uh, where is it? Givaudan makes Sempakita, which is another jasmine type note, but it's a little bit more on the not as sweet as jasmine specialty but it's still a typical jasmine note uh this jasmine specialty to me is just straight up just sweet white flower narcotic slightly slightly maybe indolic and cotton ball like but not really but it's just a very clean you know jasmine note i mean you can't go wrong with it and if you just want something just a little bit different maybe something a little bit more indolic not as sweet Simpakita by Jivodan is a, a, another nice choice. Okay, so let's move on to something like irises, iris notes, powdery notes, those kind of florals. So, oh, there's so many. I think the ones that I've been enjoying as of lately, so there's a lot of, I'm going to pull a few out and talk about a couple of these actually dun, 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 dun. and I seem to be missing one there it is 
Okay, so with iris, violet, you know, those kinds of flowers, uh, florals, broody florals, uh, you can't go wrong with any of the ionones. There's ionone, alpha, beta, gamma, you know, methyl ionone this, methyl, you know, all those. The one that I reach for the most is ionone alpha. And to me, it's the more sweeter of the ionones. Uh, if you go with ionone beta, it's a little bit more bold woody. Uh, but ionone alpha is a little bit more delicate and sweeter. Not to say that it's, it's, it's maybe even slightly fruitier in a way, but it is sweeter, toned down, more refined, easier to work with than, in my opinion, ionone beta but ionone beta is still nice because it's a little bit more woody, it's bold, it kind of punches you in the face because it's a little bit more intense. So ionone alpha, that is definitely one I reach for a lot for some sort of powdery iris, oris kind of note. Um, if you want a base or a blend, something that's real easy to uh, work with is um, one called Aralia. And I think Aralia is just a mixture of different isomers of different ionones, which could be a mixture of ionone alpha, beta, and you know, gamma, just mixed all up in a nice base. And it's nice. I mean, there's so many different ones out there that you can get. I believe there's a, yeah, like Isoraldine 70, Isoraldine 95, you know, methyl ionone gamma. They're all, they're all kind of smelling the same at some point, but, um, Aralia uh, does it the nicest, in my opinion. And it seems just so easy to work with. It's just no off notes. Just, it doesn't lean too violety. It doesn't lean too aurisy. It's just nicely done in the middle. So it works either way. Yeah, Aralia is definitely one that I reach for quite a bit. Now, if you want to get into some more powerful iris and violet uh, materials the ones that i usually reach for like you can go with like um oris concrete oris absolute uh things like that um a lot of synthetic materials though are being made so like uh Givaudan makes oris jivco which is their rendition of an oris absolute but the one that i found that smells the best is um Iris Absolute Synthetic, which I believe is Ferminich again. It's just something about it. It's very elegantly rooty and powdery, but not sweet. Whereas to me, Givaudan's Oris Jivco has a little hint of violety sweetness, which again, it's fine if that's what you're going for, but if you want an uh, absolute, like an Aura's absolute replacer, I usually get the, the I go for the Ferminage one. That's my favorite. Now for Violet, now not Violet Leaf, but the Violet Flower, the only one that I've really came across that just knocks me on my ass because it's amazing, but it's so, so strong. And I butcher the pronunciation of this every time. And I believe it's called permanthenine. I think I said it right that time. Permanthenine. Yeah, it looks about right. And it's it's a, a pre-made base that's meant to mimic parma violets. And it's so sweet. It's definitely very violet leaf forward, but you can smell some of the powdery kind of the ionones in it. So it gives the illusion of the Parma Violet, the whole flower itself, the flower and the leaf and all these things. And it's so nice, it's so sweet, but it's so strong. Like I have one, I have this one diluted down to 0.1% dilution because it's just so hard to work with. It's so incredibly strong. So yeah, that's it for the iris materials so we got jasmine materials some of my favorite iris uh, oris materials and there's just so many other little things in between uh some of them the things that i'm grabbing for the most uh what i call workhorse materials um linalool acetate which i don't know why i really have it in a floral bin but 
Linalool acetate kind of uh, is most commonly found in like uh, lavender, bergamot. And that's something I'm always reaching for in every single blend that I do. Standalone linalool, gotta have linalool. I'm always reaching for it in every blend I do. A nice alternative would be Cornol. Cornol and linalool are one and the same to me, except for Cornol lasts just a little bit longer and it's a little tiny bit spicier, kind of dirty. Um, kind of has this like a uh, herbal coriander thing going on where linalool is a little bit more cleaner and floral, but they're used one and the same and they're, they're both really nice. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about that I reach for a lot? Hmm. I think that should cover that. Uh, let's move on to, yeah, cause all these other things are really, really specialty. Like I have uh, Ars, uh, Orsmanthus Absolute, you know, Pink Lotus Absolute, you know, all my neural acetates, my Orange Blossom Absolutes, Honeysuckle. I have just too many specialty things, but these are some of the more generic ones that I reach for a lot. All right, so let's move on to Lily of the Valley Mugwe. And oh, actually another one that I should talk about, which I, I find is I reach for a lot as of recently. And I probably should have talked this uh, talked about this with the, the Jasmines uh, earlier. The one that I do find that I reach for a lot if I'm going for a Jasmine note and I reach for a Jasmine specialty base or Simpakita, or even if I'm just dumping in just, you know, a shit, so, a shit ton of like benzyl salicylate, which is another Jasmine note. If I ever want to kind of cream it up and bold, what I call boldify, it just kind of amplifies the, the white uh, cre the, the white petal and the creaminess and it kind of amplifies things is uh, Lactojasmone, uh, which this one is made by, I believe, Simrise. Every maker out there like uh, Furminich IFF, they make their own version. They call theirs Jasmine Lactone, uh, but the one from Simrise is Lactojasmone. I think it's all one and the same. It's just a jasmine, uh, soft jasmine petal-like material but it's very, very lactonic, very creamy. You'll pick up nuances of like peach and coconut because it's very creamy. And I have it diluted down to 1% because it's pretty strong. So I dose it real low if I just need to give my jasmine note just a kick of creaminess or just a kick in, the, just a little swift kick in the ass to push it up a little bit in a creamy way. Uh, lacto jasmine or jasmine lactone, same thing. Uh, okay. So moving on to Mugwe, Lily of the Valley. And I have a hard time, I'm gonna have a hard time discussing this because over the years, the more materials that I pick up with this, I'm beginning to smell or see that they're all starting to smell the same. Even though it seems like year after year when new companies come out, oh, we've got a new, you know, Lily All replacer or new this, a new Mugwe material. And I get it, I smell it. And I'm like, you know what? I've got something that smells almost identical to it. So I, all of these are starting to smell the same to me now. It's just some of them are a little bit more aldehydic and piercing. Some of them are just a little bit more toned down and softer and petal-like. So the ones that I really enjoy using the most, I'll talk about the ones that I like and the ones that I really don't like. Let me pull out one, two, three, four. Okay. So the ones that I'm not going to talk about is Liliol and Lyral. Um, for one, I don't know what the hype is with Lyral, even though it's banned in the UK and everyone's like still searching for a Lyral replacement. I don't like the smell of Lyral. To me, it smells chemically harsh. Now I do understand why people like Lyral because it's a soft mugwe, you know, cyclosa note that's long lasting and none of these really are long lasting. Like this on a paper strip is 300 to 400 hours and that's great for a floral material. But when I smell it, it just smells chemically harsh to me and I don't like Lyral. Um, Liliol, however, is nice. It's not as long lasting as Lyral but it's a little bit more cleaner, uplifting, a little bit slightly more greener and alhydic, uh, but it leans more towards, you know, the classic Lily All or Lily Mugwe kind of thing. But, so I'm not gonna talk about those two. 
because I really don't use them that much uh, because of IFRA restrictions. I'm reaching for all the other materials that are kind of like one and the same, but slightly different. But let's talk about my favorites. The one that I usually go for the most, Lily Floor. And I wish, I really wish I would have wrote the, the manufacturer's name on these bottles because I think Lily Floor is Firmage yet again. I could be wrong. It could be IFF or Givaudan. It's one of those three. But to me, this is the one that I reach for first, um, only because it is long lasting. It's long lasting like Lyral is, um, but it is better smelling in my opinion. Um, it does lean more towards the classic uh, greener side of Mugwai, but it has this really dense kind of white flower thing going on, which I really enjoy. It's got the density white flower thing going on of Lyral, but it still has that fresh greenness that Lilial has, but it has the longevity that everyone wants. So this is the one that I reach for the most if I want the classic long lasting Mugwai Lily of the Valley scent. Again, that's Lily Floor. Now an alternative, if I want to shake it up a bit, as I shook the bottle, how funny, is called Floor Hydral. And to me, this one is a slightly bit cleaner than Lily Floor. And when I mean cleaner, I mean because it's called Floor Hydro, Hydro meaning uh, obviously more aqua, uh, aqueous, uh, aqua. Uh, I don't want to say watery because it's definitely not watery, but it does smell more ozonic and kind of. I want to say slightly piercing in an aldehydic kind of way, but it's not fatty like most aldehydes are. But it is a cleaner, brighter version of Lily Floor. So again, that's Floor Hydro. If you want something cleaner, brighter, and more ozonic, that's the one I reach for next. But again, it's still a classic Mugwai Lily of the Valley material. Um, some of the other ones that I recently acquired that I'm still toying with, but I'm really starting to like, um, is called Dupical or Dupical. I forget who makes it. It's either Firminich, Jividan, or IFF, but this one is hella strong. This one, I have it diluted down to 0.5%, um, and it's definitely more on the fizzy aldehydic side, which is why I have it uh, diluted so low. This is something I would not add as a Mugwe note in my perfume blend alone by itself. This is something I use if I want to enhance one of my other Mugwe materials. So if I'm sitting there making a blend and I use Lily Floor, I'm like, perfect, I've got the note, it sits well, everything's blended great, but I want to add a little sparkle or just a slight push in the Mugwai direction, but you know, I don't want to use any more Lily Floor or anything like that. I'll usually grab Duplicle. And it's very sharp piercing aldehydic, but very clean. And it's still flowery, fresh Mugwai. It's a great material. It's one I, I've been reaching for a lot as of recently. Now, I want to talk about this one because it's not a favorite of mine, but it's a it's the most recent acquire. I just got it a couple weeks ago, and it's called Lily Bell from Simrise. It's either Cinerome or Simrise makes Lily Bell. And my initial initial impressions are yes, it is nice, but no, I probably won't reach for it often because it smells too much like all these other Damugwe materials that I have, like. Everyone raves about Hivernal or Hivernal Neo. And to me, I don't care for it because it smells too green. It's not flowery enough in a Mugwai. So if I want something extremely green and flowery, Hivernal Neo does it, but I don't reach for it that often. Aquaflora, in my opinion, just sucks ass. It's just it's just too chemically harsh. Even when I have it diluted down to 1%, it's just it's it's just horrible. Uh, Star Fleur from IFF is nice, but to me, Star Fleur smells pretty similar to Floor Hydral in a way, but just in a more, just even more ozonic, if, if you can imagine that. And Lily Bell, to me, smells way too much like Star Fleur and 
you know, there's other ones like Magentol, Mugentanol, Lilytol, Cyclemax. It smells too typical of all the other materials that are out there like Cyclemax, Lilytol, you know, Myol, all that. And so when I got Lily Bell, I was like, yeah, it's nice. And yes, it is brand new, but it doesn't offer anything new to the table that's already been done before. Um, and plus when I read online, their spec sheet said it only lasts like 10 hours, which I mean, that's like a typical, you know, you know, cold pressed citrus only lasts 10 hours. So, uh, you know, a Mugwe material that doesn't offer anything new to the table and it only lasts as barely even a top note is like, in my opinion, it's like, why use it? I need to put this on a paper strip actually. I'm gonna do that and test it later because I think that could be a typo on their SDS sheet. That, that must last more than 10 hours in my opinion. So that's it for the some of the florals. Let's um, jump into some more floors. Let's go into the rose and geranium category now. Okay, so we got the bin here for the other florals. Now this is just rose and geranium. And this is gonna be hard to pick out a few because I have so many that I really like. But I wanna talk about a couple that I reach for quite a bit. And a couple that I really don't. Okay. So, if you want an economical rose note and you don't want to go with naturals. Um, I still, to me, I still stand by the old Givodan Rose Jivco. And to me, it's still, it's, it just works. It smells like a classic, you know, Rose Auto oil. And it's completely synthetic, but it just works. It's fresh, it's rosy, slightly I want to say it's slightly clean rosy. It almost leans a little feminine to me as far as rosiness because it's so clean and there's really not much of anything spicy or anything sweet. It's just a sweet or it's just a very soft rosy petal note and it just works. So that's one I still reach for when I need just a classic rose note. Um, now, if I'm working on a blend that's going to feature predominantly something rose, I, I probably won't reach for that and I'll reach for something else. But like if I just need just a generic rose note that's not featured in a blend, it's just there just to kind of play play around with all the other florals, Rose Jivco still works. Now, there are some other bases that I really do like, like uh, Satalia, Satalia Base, which I think is Givaudan. Now, Satalia Base to me is very similar to Rose Jivco, but they went and sweetened it up quite a bit. And I don't mean sweet in a sense of honey. I mean, it's sweet and fruity. So if you want a sweet, fruity rose synthetic, Satalia Base is another great one. Now, uh, naturals. There's a lot of naturals out there, obviously. Rose Absolute uh, is the most probably used in my opinion for naturals, but there's just so many out there. So I just want to talk about a couple different ones. Oh, another synthetic, uh, Rose Base. Wardia, uh, I believe is made from Furminage. Wardia is super nice. It's probably the best synthetic Rose Base you can get, but it's the most expensive. Um, and it's really, really strong. It's probably twice as strong as all the other synthetic rose bases, but it's nice because this is a classic full-bodied rose that does incorporate some, you know, dirtiness, a little spiciness from like the eugenols and things like that. And it's still, it's just very well-rounded. So Wardia base, if you can afford it, yeah, grab it. It's great. Uh, okay, so back to the, the, the naturals. I just want to grab all the diff some of the different ones that I've acquired and some that I really like. Okay, I think that should do it. So, Rose Absolutes. Um, let me put that back. Um, there's different ones from different regions, and obviously you can get different types of rose, whether if it's a you know a shrub rose, a climbing rose, tea tree rose, all these different ones. So, but the ones that I reach for the most, obviously the one that's standard 
true the test of time that just always works for a just a general rose absolute is the one from the morocco region and to me it's it's nice because it's very pea or phenyl ethyl alcohol forward so it's dense and not as soft and petal like but it has a nice honeyed undertone and it is a little bit sweet, but it packs a punch. So you would use it very sparingly, like probably one part per thousand in your formula. And it really packs a punch. So the Rose, Rose Absolute uh, from the Morocco region is usually my first go-to. Now, if I wanted a Rose Absolute that was just slightly, a little bit more dirtier, a little bit more earthier, probably spicier and dare I even say manlier like a manly rose is IFF makes what is called rose ultimate extract and this is kind of hard to come by I picked this up from a buddy of mine uh, Harold Sherwood over in the UK he has a website now um, I'll probably put the link in the description if you want to go pick this up he just launched a new website and he sells this it's it's fantastic it's a very cost-effective Rose Absolute because I think what Furminich, or not Furminich, IFF does is after they're done making batches of all these different Rose Absolutes, you have all this gunk and excess stuff that's not being used. So they scrape it all up and they redistill it and make another Absolute out of the non-used um, you know, things from the first batch of the Absolute. But it's still very rosy, very dense but it's you're now picking up some of the little bit more dirtiness the little bit more funk it is definitely more spicier than the rose absolute from morocco but i like it because the it's like a spicy rose gives it like this manly punch so if i'm ever working on a male fragrance that has a featured rose note i'll usually reach for the rose ultimate extract from iff now another one that i'll talk about real quickly is this one's a little bit different. Um, this one's a Rose Absolute, but it's the Gallica Rose, which is a different type of rose. And this one is, I believe I purchased it from, where did I get this from? Maybe Liberty Naturals, and it was sourced from Russia, which I thought was strange. I didn't know Russia had, uh, you know, roses coming from there. But I kind of dig this because this one is very soft. It almost reminds me a lot of Rose Jivko, where it's very classic, soft. It's not sweet in any way. It's not spicy. It's not dirty. It's just very soft and petal-like, but this is like the natural absolute of it. It's almost very classic in a sense where it reminds me of rose, like dried rose pur uh, potpourri petals. And for some reason, it smells dated. Like it's something my grandma would love because I don't know it's like a soft powdery rose but I really like it and it works well in feminine compositions okay so we talked about synthetic rose bases that I like rose absolutes that I like let's talk about a couple random things um, that I do like as far as the geranium varieties the now geranium I usually just have geranium essential oils. Uh, of course, you can get synthetics like geraniol and things like that, but I'm talking just for like a, a geranium note. Uh, there's different uh, essential oils from different regions. The one that I seem to gravitate towards the most is this one from uh, Africa in Madagascar. And for some reason, it's the most full-bodied to me. It's not as green and piercing is some of the other regions, but the one from Madagascar has this boldness and it's a little bit more sweeter in my opinion. So I really dig that in a geranium. So it's still classic geranium where it's floral and definitely very green, but because it's got a little bit more boldness punch and it's a little bit sweeter, I feel like it just rounds out the overall just geranium vibe. And it's really nice. I really like it a lot. Um, there's also what you can get is called geranium turpinless. Now this one is definitely the fresher of all the geranium oils that I've ever had. It's the most green. Um, it's very, I mean, it's not sweet. 
It's just, I smell, mo I smell more geranium leaf than I do the actual flower, which isn't bad, but because it's turpinless, that basically means you can use something like this in your blend where it sits as a middle note, but all the terpenes are removed so it doesn't interfere with too much of the top note. Uh, so if something like regular geranium oil, which has the terpenes still in it, when you put it in a blend, you'll, you'll immediately smell it you know, in the first, you know, first five, 10 minutes, you'll smell the terpenes uh, because it's impacting into the, the top of the, uh, the fragrance. Now the terpenless variety, because all the terpenes are removed, it sits more in the middle and it allows the top, the top end of the perfume to breathe and let all the other things, you know, kind of take uh, forefront. So let's say for example, if you're, using geranium as a you know as a middle note or just in a blend in general and you're using like uh we'll just say randomly lemon essential oil as the top note you know lemon essential oil with some you know dehydromercisinol or something like that if you use standard geranium oil you'll notice the geranium in the top head space along with all the other citrus oils but if you use geranium turpinless the geranium is less apparent because the terpenes are removed in the top headspace. So in the first hour of you know the journey of the fragrance, you won't get as much geranium as you would with regular essential oil. You'll it'll become apparent more in the mids. And it just allows the the top notes to breathe on their own without the geranium terpenes getting in the way, if that makes sense. So that's enough talking and rambling about those two. The last two are synthetics, are what I call my, you know, my heavy hitters, my bombers, my sucker punches. And that is your damascones. Damascones are synthetic, you know, molecules that are very rosy, geranium, but they're very, very strong, super strong. So I have them diluted down to 1%, some even to 0.5%, but the ones that I use the most, damascone alpha is probably my most used one. It's a rosy, but with a fruity apple kind of uh, brightness to it. So I love using that and pretty much everything. Anything that's got rose or geranium, I usually kick it with a little damascone alpha. Uh, another one that I use a lot is uh, Damascenone, uh, which I believe is made by Furminich. And Damascenone is different because it almost smells like they took all the Damascones and combined them. It's a, it, it has this apple fruitiness from Damascone Alpha. It's got this kind of red berry Damascone Beta vibe, and it's got the dirty Gamma vibe. It's almost like they kind of took all three and made a blend. And that's kind of nice in my opinion. It's just kind of, it's it's a... It's a workhorse material that kind of works for anything that's rose and geranium, and I use it a lot. So that covers pretty much all the other rose materials. I mean, I've got a bunch of other things in here, but I'm not gonna bother talking about it because they're really specialty and I don't reach for them that much. So let's move on to the next bin. Okay, so here I've got my fruity bins, and it's a hodgepodge of just a bunch of things because fruity, can go in so many different directions. There's so many specialty bases. There's so many different molecules. There's so many naturals. Well, actually, no, there really isn't any naturals for fruity. I was thinking citruses, yeah. So there's just so much in here. I don't even know where to begin. So uh, let's talk about some of, well, we'll just take different class, uh, categories of fruitiness. Um, let's start with watermelon. Now I know a lot of people think when they uh, think uh, watermelon, they think calone. To me, calone is, you know, I think it's also called watermelon aldehyde, but it's more of an ozonic aquatic kind of material and it's not used so much for uh, a watermelon or a melon note. Uh, if you want a good watermelon note, there's only two that really work in my opinion. One is uh, cis six. Uh, what is this? Uh, cis six nonanol. And to me, it doesn't get any more watermelon than, than this. This is straight up. It smells like you're just smelling watermelon juice. If somebody just took a watermelon and just pulverized the red, you know, watermelon and just squeezed out all the juice, that's what you get here. Cis six uh, nonanol. That's just straight up watermelon juice. But super 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 strong uh, i have it down to dilute down to 0.1 percent now if you want to get something specialty another favorite of mine that doesn't smell necessarily of watermelon this smells more of like cantaloupe and honeydew and that is from jivodan it's called melon jivco and 
it's a dead ringer of cantaloupe melon. So if you want melon notes, melon Jivco and Sisix Nanano, those are your two that you should probably always have. And those are the only two that I reach for if I want a watermelon note in a fragrance. Um, let's see what to check out now. Okay, let's check out a couple. Let me just pull a couple out here. And these are what I call uh, red fruits. Something red. Man, I got a lot. Okay, I better stop. Uh, we'll add. No, no, we'll keep that. Yeah, we'll add that in there. Okay. So red fruits. When I think red fruits, I think of cherries, strawberries, prunes, anything fruity, pity. Uh, something with a pit and that obviously is a red color in nature. So there's a lot. Um, now let's just talk about uh, cassis. Uh, cassis or uh, black currant buds and things like that. The only two that I find myself ever ever reaching for is there's two. Um, IFF makes Cassafix which to me is a you know it's a classic you know, Cassis, uh, Blackberry-ish kind of, you know, vibe. It's very light in my opinion. So you can use this in excess without it ever overpowering the blend. But Cassafix is a good, it's a good one. But I usually use it in combination with my favorite one, which is Cassis Base from, I think Furminich makes Cassis Base. And it's super, super strong. You'll want to dilute this down to like maybe 2% before you use it in one of your blends. But to me, it does not get any better than this, than if you want the typical Cassis, uh, you know, note uh, in your perfume. Cassis Base by far is my favorite material. It's, it is a synthetic but it's my go-to, it just works and it never fails. And then if I wanna just kick it up a notch and maybe a different vibe or you know amplify it, I'll use Cassafix, which is a more softer and subtle version, but Cassis Base, it does the job. You'll never have to use anything else. Um, another favorite that I use so much, especially in rosy perfumes, uh, if you want the plum note, if you want a simple plum note without having to recreate your own base, Prunella does it. It nails it. It is the perfect ripened plum. Like every time I smell this, I can just smell a black plum just sitting right here and I just took a bite out of it. Prunella. You gotta have Prunella. I reach for it all the time if I need plum. And it works well, again, with plum, uh, rose Rose Accords and Rose Perfumes, if you want to sweeten up a rose, Prunella. That's that's usually my first go-to. Um, now let's take a look at... Oh, since we are on uh, the topic of Cassis, um, this is an old classic base. It's called Dew Fruit. And don't let the name fool you because when I thought Dew Fruit, um, I thought dew, honeydew melon. I thought it was going to be a melon type of thing, but it's not. It's almost like a combination of cassis, raspberry, and a little bit of sulfuric sparkle. And this is really nice. It's probably one of those that you can use a little bit more heavy handed. Like if you want to feature a, let's say an actual black currant bud note or a Cassis note. I would reach for Cassis base first, but if you want to surround that note with a little bit more Cassis raspberry fruitiness, Dew Fruit is good for that because it's not as strong and it allows you to use a little bit more in your blend without it overpowering. It's a nice modifier. Um, strawberry, if you want a strawberry note, the best one that I've came across is a base from Robert Tett, and it's just called Strawberry Natural Robert Tett Base. And it literally nails the smell of a freshly ripened big red strawberry. It's 
perfect. I don't use it that much, but I wanted to talk about it because it's so lifelike. Um, I don't really feature strawberry that much in my blends because I feel it, it smells too childlike because strawberries, I always, when I think of the word strawberry, I always think of in my childhood, like my sister had like strawberry shortcake dolls and they all smelled like freaking strawberries. So anytime I smell strawberry, it just brings me back to my childhood and it's very feminine. So I don't usually feature it or use this much, but that's my own damn fault. It smells really good. Uh, let's see. The one material I do want to talk to uh, talk uh, about is a lot of people are always chasing down the cherry note. How do I make a cherry base? I want to feature cherry. Like how do I make Tom Ford's cherry, you know, black cherry perfume? And cherry is pretty difficult. But the one single material that I've came across that works really well to pull off a black cherry note uh, without going into like, you know, a, a 10 to 15 accord base of making your own is called Fruit Allure. And I think this is made by, who makes Fruit Allure? I think it's Simrise or Cinerome. It could be Cinerome. But Fruit Allure is, again, it's a fruity molecule but when you smell it, like I have this one diluted down to 1% because it's super strong. To the nose, the first thing that comes to mind is black cherry. It's black cherry, but it has the typical earthy old kind of nuance um, that you get with um, like any of the, you know, the butyrates, the ethylpropanates, the allyl caproates that have that like tropical fruity ethereal kind of vibe. Uh, Fruit Allure has that going on in the background, but to me, the, the black cherry note stands above it. So this is a good one you should look into if you want to try like a little bit of cherry in your blend. Uh, so raspberry. If somebody's like, how do I do raspberry easily without doing a 10 to 15 line accord base? The two that I usually go to, obviously, raspberry ketone. Duh, it's like, if you want red raspberry, you gotta have raspberry ketone. And it just works. Um, it's probably the most used material for raspberry note. Now, if you wanna give it a kick in the ass for some juiciness, there is a material called fructolate, which I think is maybe Ferminich, maybe IFF, I don't know, but it's called fructolate. And it is a raspberry, a red raspberry like material, uh, but it also has this crisp apple thing going on along with it. So if in combination with raspberry ketone, kick it up a notch with uh, fructolate uh, to give it a little bit of more bright, crisp snapness. And then of course, there's also, uh, where the hell is it? It's somewhere in here. Robert Tett makes also a raspberry base, which is really, really good as well. That's another one worth considering. But raspberry ketone is usually my first go-to because it's long lasting. It's like 300, 400 hours on a paper strip. Uh, fructolate and raspberry uh, base from Robert Tett. It's more of a top, maybe, maybe slightly middle note, but more of a top note. Okay, so that covers that. What else? Pineapple. Let's talk pineapple. Uh, pineapple, pineapple. Oh, there's where this, there's that. So I'll put that back there. Pineapple. So for pineapple, it may be this one. Let me smell. Could work. Nope. I think this is the one. That's the one. Okay. Pineapple. Pineapple's easier than you think. A lot of people are always trying to get this pineapple note done right and it's it's stupid easy. One, if you just want a easy pre-made base, again, Robert Tett makes a pineapple base and it smells just like pineapples. However, it's not a convincing pineapple to me. When I think pineapples, I think of very bright and tart pineapples. Because to me, pineapples, when you bite into it, they're very bright, uplifting, and bright. This is a little bit more sweeter, toned down, and I don't know why, 
but Robert Tay or Robert Tet's base, the pineapple base, has this powderiness to it. It has this soft powdery thing going on, and that kind of bothers me. It's almost like this gives you the illusion of not just the pineapple fruit, but maybe the outer shell of the pineapple too, that has this kind of that weird thing going on. So if you want just a pineapple note, Robert Tet pineapple base, that's the only one you want to use, fine, use it. But if you want to kick it up a notch, what I like to use is a little bit of that. Obviously the Allele Amyl Glycolate, classic standby pineapple material, but it's very bright metallic. So that will liven up the Robert Tett pineapple again. So that's Allele Amyl Glycolate, gotta have it. Something you must, every perfumer must have. And the two that I like to do to really kick it up a notch, to really sweeten up that pine uh, pineapple note, uh, ethyl caproate. Ethyl caproate to me is a perfect, sweet, ethereal pineapple kind of note. It's a single molecule. So I would never use this alone and, and say in my blend, oh, I feature a pineapple note because this alone won't be a convincing pineapple note. It'll be this in conjunction with either Allele Mill Glycolate or Robert Tett's uh, Pineapple Base. So that's a good one to have, ethyl caproate. And then to really seal the deal with a juicy, mouth-watering pineapple note, Sultanine. Holy crap. It's so juicy and it works well with pretty much any fruit accord that you have. If you just want to add that mouth-watering saliva, juicy, just like you bite into something and the juice is just running down your chin, you want that effect in an olfactory, like a smell. Sultanine, I think Simrise makes this. Um, Sultanine does that, but it's super, super strong. I've got mine diluted down to 0.01% because it's that strong and I use it just in trace amounts. But the only downside to this is it's very short lived. It's only like four to six hours on a paper strip. So you're only gonna smell this on the very first opening, but that first opening of the perfume spray is gonna be lovely and mouth watering if you use Sultanine. Okay, I'm talking way too much uh, for fruits because I just have so many fruits. Um, so let's talk peach, apricot. Um, so obviously you can use aldehyde. I think it, what is it? C16 or something, C16 peach or C4. One of the aldehyde C's, there's a, one dedicated directly for peach. Um, obviously that's an easy dumb reach to go for. Um, another one, another good lactonic peachy material that I love reaching for is called Apri, Apri Florin, which I think is made by Simrise. That's a lovely, lovely, soft, fuzzy peach. Now, when I think peaches, like if you want a, a peach skin, the soft, fuzzy peach skin, Apriflorin does just that. You get this fuzziness with it because it has a slight floral undertone. So it's peach with the floral undertone, gives it that illusion of being like a fuzzy peach skin, but it's still juicy and peachy. Apriflorin, that's a really good one. Obviously, Robert Tay makes a fucking, sorry, didn't mean to swear, makes a freaking base, peach natural base by Robert Tay, and it works, it smells good. All the Robert Tay bases generally work really well. I mean, so if you just want pre-made bases of anything fruity, look into the Robert Tay, uh, Robert Tay bases, they just work. Um, and then some of the more classic uh, materials that I reach for, if I need to extend the peach note a little bit, Obviously, like I said, the, the aldehyde C, you know, peach variety works well. Um, hold on, let me forget which one it is. There it is. Nectarate. Um, Nectarate works well. I think this is made by IFF, or maybe it's Givodan. I can't recall, but Nectarate is another good peachy, nectarine, lactonic material. The one that I don't care for that much is Nectaril. Um, now Nectaril for some reason is listed as more of a base note, like a long lasting base note, you know, like one of those 300, 400 uh, hours on a paper strip material. But for some reason, every time I use this in a blend, no matter how much I use, it's really not detectable. It never really punches through the mix. Um, 
but it's probably something worth exploring because it does smell nicer than the aldehyde C, what is it, C14 or C16, whatever peach. So, but it is long lasting and it's worth exploring, but I just never had any good luck using it. I usually use the aldehyde C peach with apiflorin or nectarate. You can also look at apritone. Yeah, so that's it. Okay, enough talk about the fruits. Let's move on to, uh, let's move on to the next category. We might have to only do one more category because I have a funny feeling this is running way too long and we've only gone through a couple bins out of like the 15 to 20 bins that I have. So we might just have to do this video in like two to three parts. So let me grab the next bin. The last bin that we'll talk about today and then I'll record some more maybe throughout the week and do a two part, three part video for more other categories. Musks, gotta have musks. And there's so many different ones to choose from, but I'll go through my favorites, my ones that I reach for the most often. And then I'll talk about a couple that I acquired that I really don't use at all. Um, so let's talk about... There's going to be a lot actually to talk about. I, I, I actually reach for quite a bit. Okay, that's a good starting point. So which ones do I reach for the most? The most musts that I reach for the most obviously are going to be what I call the workhorse musts. And those are the extremely clean, transparent white musts. And you're like, what's a white musk? Soft, transparent, linen-like, almost undetectable to the nose, but it serves more as a fixative. And the ones that I reach for the most to do the clean white musk thing Galaxolide, obviously, everyone, it's probably the most common used musk in all of perfumery, and Habanolide. The only difference between these two, I mean, to me, they both serve the same purpose. It's just Habanolide smells a little bit more linen-like. Galaxolide is just a little bit more effervescent, clean, transparent. Both are must-haves, in my opinion. Um, another good one, as a uh, like a backup or a secondary thing is tonalide. Uh, some other manufacturers also make it as fixalide, but tonalide is what it's mostly known for. And if you want that, like if you ever done your laundry and pulled towels out of a hot dryer that just came out of a hot dryer and you just smell it and you're like, oh, it smells so warm and fuzzy and soft to my face, tonalide, that is the one that will do that. That's the, that's the linen, you know, the very soft, delicate, pillowy, soft, cottony, white musk. <coughs> now, another must have, in my opinion, is Havetalide, a more recent musk, but it's one of those that you can easily smell. Like all, you know, Galaxolide, Habanolide, Totalide, some people can't really smell those because they're so, the molecules are so big and heavy that the minute they hit the nose, you're just, your nose just shuts off. And it's like, whoa, dude, I, I can't even comprehend. That's just so massive. And it comes across as smelling of nothing, but it does smell clean and white. Havetalide, however, is another, in my opinion, a white musk. It's not dirty or animalic at all. It takes the clean white musk smell and amplifies it with something a little bit more fruity on the top. In the case of Havetalide, it smells fruity and juicy, almost like of pears. So if you want white, clean musk with a slight fruity twist on the top, Helvetolide is a uh, one to go for. Now, if you want the same thing, where is it? Uh, I thought I had it, oh, here we go. If you want that same kind of effect, but instead of a fruity pear nuance and you want a fruity, bright, crisp apple nuance, Edenolide from IFF is pretty much the same thing. It's like kind of like the same thing as Helvetolide, but instead of a white musk with a pear nuance, this is a white musk with a crisp apple nuance. But between the two, if you're like, I only want to choose one, I would choose Helvetolide only because Helvetolide to me is a little bit more stronger. It's a little, a little bit more easier detectable on the nose a little bit more, pow not powdery, but a little bit softer and delicate in touch. Uh, Edenolide is just pretty much straight up clean white mask with just a crisp apple on top. The other two that I will strongly recommend everyone has and are my two personal favorites, especially in men's fragrances, 
mucinone. Uh, I forget who makes mucinone. Maybe it's IFF. Maybe it's Furminich. Probably Furminich. Mucinone is a classic, classic. Uh, it almost smells like musk ketone, which is pretty much heavily restricted by IFRA, but it's a classic animalic, soft, warm, fuzzy, dark musk. Mucinone is perfect for that. It's I use it all the time in men's fragrances. Now, another one that uh, it works great, well, I would say in both men's and women's fragrances, but more probably geared towards men's I use a lot is Embretolide. Uh, and Bretolide is another must-have. And it smells just, it's a, you know, synthetic must that smells like amber seeds. And it's a little bit more on the fruity side. But it's a discreet fruity where Helvetolide smells like pears. Edenolide smells like crisp apples. And Bretolide is fruity sweet, but you can't tell what kind of fruit. It's almost like a delicate red berry fruit, but when you smell it, you're like, Maybe it could be like a cassis, black currant kind of vibe. Maybe, yeah, kind of smells like that. Smells like a, a a nice, warm, delicate, soft white musk. Not really white. I would say it's it's a little warmer with a cassis kind of fruity fruitiness going on. Um, now those are the ones I reach for the most. The ones I reach for the least, Tonky Tone. <laughs> Tonky Tone. I don't know why I got talked into buying this. Literally straight up smells like deer piss. If you want straight up animalic, yeah, Tonky Tone is one. Tonky Tone Musk is one. Shangri-Lide is one I, di I don't reach for at all, but I find it interesting because Shangri-Lide Musk, to me, smells very animalic. And what I mean animalic in this sense, it almost smells like the pelt of a wet dog or a wet bear or a wet deer. There's something hairy about this and something like damp and dirty. It's definitely not clean. So those are two I definitely do not reach for. And then I just have a couple other random musts that I don't reach for like romandelide is super, super fruity. To me, romandelide, even though everyone on the internet that you talk, that you read about, and it says, oh, romandelide is a good one-to-one -one replacer of galaxolide, hell no, it's not. Galaxolide and romandelide smell nothing alike, in my opinion. Romandelide almost is so fruity, it just burns the nose. It has this ethereal kind of uh, fruitiness that you can smell like, just like bananas, apples, pears, tropical fruit. It's just got this smorgasbord of fruitiness that sits on the top and it's very piercing and ethereal sitting on top of a white musk. So it's a very strange one that I haven't really, I, every time I use it, it overpowers the blends. Even if I use it in small amounts, it just, romandelide just takes over. I like this smell, it smells great. I just have a hard time working with it because to me, it's not your typical clean white musk like you know, galaxolide, habanolide. So whenever you see something on the internet that says, oh, romandolide is a good, you know, one-to-one -one replacer with galaxolide, don't believe that shit. They smell nothing alike and they do not perform alike at all. And then you've got your random things like xenolide, celestolide, aura known, aura touch, ethylene brassolate, just random musts that I don't usually reach for that often because they're, they're kind of generic smelling. And like xenolide, celestolide to me kind of smell almost identical and they perform the same so I don't reach for them that much. But the ones that I did pull out and talk about are the ones that I do reach for all the time. So that's it for musks. I'm out of breath. We talked a lot about some of my favorites and we still haven't even covered citruses. We haven't covered herbals. We didn't cover anything green or leafy. We didn't cover ambers or resins. We didn't talk about smokies, incense or leathers. I mean... <laughs> There's, yeah, aldehydes we didn't touch. So I'll have to make another, you know, two or three part video and cover those bins. But for now, that's all I'm going to talk about. And hope this uh, meeting, or this meeting, hope this video was fun for you guys. Just to see in my world what I kind of reach for as my go-to materials and what I re really, really enjoy having in my arsenal. So with that being said, until next time.